Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be talking about Earth, Venus, Mars and Mercury. And I'm actually going to show you how tremendously massive and large Earth is in comparison to those other three planets. Welcome to What The Math. So about a year ago I made a video where I showed you that you could actually place all of the planets in our solar system between Earth and the Moon and that would actually fit really really well. This is actually the simulation you can find in Universe Inbox. The Moon is right there, Earth is right here, and right between them you could place all of the planets in our solar system with just a few kilometers left in between. But today we're actually going to only talk about the terrestrial planets, the four planets you see right here. And it just so happens that even though we normally talk about these four planets in relative equality, as in they were basically relatively same because they are terrestrial planets, in reality, Earth is dramatically larger, more massive, and also a lot more impressive than the other three planets. And so today I'm going to show you what I mean by this. But first, let's actually just see them collide with each other, because that's kind of what I wanted to do here. So let's start by placing everything except for Earth. So basically the other three terrestrial planets. I'm going to create a new simulation and take Mercury, put it right here, then take Venus, which is going to be a lot larger in terms of size and mass, and then take Mars. So let's just put it right here in between. I'm not going to place Earth just yet, but you can see it in the background there. And in terms of size, I guess it's sort of comparable, but here is the thing. So let's just collide them and see what happens. They're going to start colliding with each other in a few seconds. Um, and as they do collide and basically collapse into a single object, you're going to start noticing something very unusual. And I'm going to show it to you in just a few seconds. I should have actually disabled the fragmentation because we've just lost some of the mass due to basically objects colliding, but also creating a lot of destructive components. And we're going to change this in a few minutes. Um, but right now we have created this very large, very massive, or the also super hot object that seems to be evaporating really, really quickly. Okay, that is not good. It's losing a lot of mass because I think I just uh, created something too hot. All right, well, that didn't really work out as I planned. So it looked cool, but it's only about the mass of Mercury right now. Let's try this again. Uh, but this time we're going to actually disable a few of the uh, options here. So we're going to place them here again, but I'm going to go into the simulation and disable the, what do I need to disable? I need to disable fragmentation and also maybe collision heating because I don't want things to warm up just yet. So hopefully now, if they collide again, it should be a little bit more accurate in terms of um, the total mass. Okay, yeah, that's pretty good. And quite beautiful as well, actually. So let's go into the mass radius and density here and take a look at them after, I guess, a few minutes when the planetary uh, size and mass stabilizes. So right around here, it's going to start increasing radius because it just received this a tremendous amount of mass and its density will actually fall a little bit. And we're going to wait for it to cool down just a little bit. So maybe after a few minutes, as soon as these numbers stop changing, we're going to take a look at this and compare it to Earth. All right, so here we go. It's just a little bit under the mass of Earth, so it's only about 98% mass of Earth. In other words, three other planets are actually not as massive as Earth. In terms of the actual radius, it's practically Earth-sized, and in terms of the actual density, it's just under the density of Earth as well. In other words, if I were to combine Mercury, Mars, and Venus together, they would still actually be smaller, both in size and in mass than our own planet. So this suggests that, for some unknown reason, planet Earth is actually the most massive and also the most impressive terrestrial planet in our solar system, but also possibly 
out there in the galaxy. Because for some unknown reason, even though planet Earth is between Mars and Venus, it still seems to be larger and more massive than the other three objects. In other words, it's almost as if this was an outlier in terms of terrestrial planets in our own solar system. Uh, now, this can be explained by potential collisions early on in the development of the solar system, or it could be that, that maybe, just maybe, there are these unusual objects in every solar system, and just like we have Jupiter that seems to be a lot more massive and a lot larger than other gas giants, Earth could be that specific terrestrial planet that is a lot more massive and larger in size than other terrestrial planets. So here, if you compare the sizes, uh, this is just a few kilometers more in, in radius, but it's also probably because it's kind of hot right now. Um, in terms of mass, it is approximately two moons smaller. So um, Earth is basically about two moons more massive than this object. And in terms of density, it's also a little bit more dense. This, however, does create a few unanswered questions. And I guess one of them is that, is it possible that Earth is actually several terrestrial planets combined into one? So it could be that early on in the existence of the solar system, Earth could have actually collided with a lot more than just one object that created the moon. And it's possible that a lot of uh, planetesimals that would have actually collided with uh, Venus, Mercury, or Mars, may have actually instead collided with Earth. So it's quite possible that Earth is actually kind of an anomaly in our solar system, which could also explain why there is so many other unusual things here, including liquid water, relatively comfortable atmosphere, and of course, life. Now, finding these anomalous objects in other uh, solar systems would actually be very important for us because then we could start discovering specific properties that we need to look for in order for us to find these habitable planets. For now though, that's unfortunately all we know about Earth compared to other uh, objects and other terrestrial planets. And until we actually visit another solar system and start studying it in more detail, I don't think we'll know more. Although maybe just maybe if we have a big enough telescope, we might be able to see everything without going to the actual star system itself. Well, anyway, so now you know that these other three terrestrial planets in our solar system don't compare to Earth at all. As a matter of fact, you could even combine more objects from our solar system, like for example, Vesta, Ceres, even Pluto could go in there, and Earth would still beat them both in mass, size, and density. All in all though, this is actually a pretty cool investigation and does make you a kind of question, uh, what is it that makes Earth so special? What really happened to Earth early on that made it so unique and I guess so gigantic compared to other terrestrial planets? Well, anyway, maybe one day we'll discover this, but for now, that's all I wanted to talk about. Thank you for watching. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Space out, and as always, bye-bye.